I turn to more recent developments, first to provide a background before we outline all the faculty's many successes to which all class deans and boards and staff have contributed. We now have a well-established climate of collaboration and cooperation through open channels of communication with other professional bodies and stakeholders. In the first few months of office from June 2009, the majority of time was spent on some serious soul searching to a question posed by our landlords, the Royal College of Surgeons of England. They wanted to know whether in the long term we wanted to become an independent charity in our own right or remain at this college for the near future and become more integrated within the college. Advice was sought from outside, other similar or friendly bodies, past deans and the divisions. Internally, we set up working groups made up both of the staff and board members to consider all the options. After a huge amount of information gathering, external professional input and much discussion and debate, it became clear that in terms of resources, financial manpower expertise, we were not yet at a stage when we were ready to fly solo and would therefore benefit by remaining under the Royal College Surgeons umbrella for at least the next few years while we grew bigger and stronger. Our decision to remain at this college was unanimous, unanimously carried out at the June 2000 board meeting. Subsequent to that, from July 2011, the FGDP UK were given two seats on the college's council by a co-option of the Dean and First Vice Dean Trevor Ferguson. Previously, the faculty's Dean sat on the council as an invited member with no vote. The voice of dentistry at council has therefore doubled as our sister faculty, the FDS, has also two seats. I must record our gratitude to the current college president, Professor Norman Williams. He has tried particularly hard to make the dental faculty fraternity feel part of the college and council. Debate there is very robust, covering a wide range of issues, but what is most enlightening is that other health fields have the same problems as, and issues that we face ourselves. Finance, membership, engagement with the public and outside bodies, with legislators, regulators, and the next generation of professionals. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? In parallel with our college discussions, we were also engaged with the FDS Dean and his board. As with our overseas links, much is gained through personal relationships, and I would like to acknowledge the excellent working and personal relationship I managed to achieve with Derek Wilmot. Following informal meetings, key members of both boards <coughs> met to explore common ground this eventually led to the establishment of a joint dental council of the dental faculties of Royal College Surgeons England. Thinking well ahead, the terms and references were drafted carefully to keep the door open to enable other faculties to join if they wish in the future. The historic first meeting took place on the 29th of September 2011 and was attended both by the CDO and his deputy who is here today. Excuse me. In my opinion, <clears throat> the greatest service and success that the two English faculties have provided for our young dentists was the amalgamation of the MFGDP UK and the MFDS to form the MJDF, the Membership of Joint Dental Faculties Diploma. This has removed the confusion that faced them at an early stage in their careers to be forced to decide which path to follow. The MJDF has become the single entry point for both primary and secondary care. And it is mapped to the National Foundation training curriculum, providing a sound assessment for the modern reflective young practitioner and with the increasing numbers sitting it, although currently not mandatory, hopefully will become a normally accepted and a normally expected requirement. All the UK dental faculties can and must take a leap of faith and work together to provide even a greater service to future dentists by having one national assessment 
for all our UK Foundation dentists. I have confidence that the current leaders within UK dentistry see the sense in this. The politicians in Scotland may want to separate, but please let the professionals work together even closer. We are all, after all, uh, we are, after all a small community. Divisions with the coalition are never seen as favourable. The Royal College's president, in the short term and short time he has been in office, has shown real leadership by stop stopping the internecine wars between the colleges. If our parent bodies are now working together closely, surely the dental faculties can also do so. What is there to stop us joining forces to do the right thing by our next generation? And if we don't, will they ever forgive us? The current meetings of the dental, fa dental faculty leaders happen informally through the joint meeting of dental faculties, which includes the three UK colleges and Royal College of Surgeons Ireland. The FGDP was traditionally only an observer there, but after months of difficult negotiations and bargaining, it seems that the faculty will be allowed to become a full and equal member soon. Needless to say, that we had to show magnanimity, magnanimity during the delicate negotiations to enable progress to be made so that this body could get on with its core business of dealing with major issues facing the profession and the central principle of ensuring the best care for the public rather than getting bogged down with minutia as it was doing. Recent events should give the UK deans and their boards and colleges a wake-up call. Certain high-profile individuals outside of the current dental faculties are seeking to form a college of dentistry. They do not represent any one established body. While welcoming their support, it is the dental faculty's right and business as standard setters to lead on the forming of a college with their core of fellows. The external initiative may be just the right catalyst for the UK dental faculties to minimize their differences and work towards a greater goal and the ultimate prize, this College of Dentistry. The question is, will the standard setters take up the challenge and become the standard bearers for a common voice for dentistry? We have already touched on the faculty's examination success with the MJDF. Our education programs have also had equal success by being modular, carried out during what could be termed practitioner-friendly hours at weekends, spread over a reasonable time period, and tying it workplace-based practice, peer review, and mentoring. The flagship implant diploma has been exported to Europe and Hong Kong, and its format copied elsewhere. Similarly, the restorative diploma course is much sought after by practitioners wishing to enhance their skills. Many of these GDPs exposed for the first time to these new ways of learning go on to complete a master's degree and some even sign up for PhDs. As everyday practitioners, they probably never believed they would end up following such an academic path. The leadership and management diploma Diploma initiated again in Malcolm's time is another program ahead of its time. Others have only just begun to get to grips with the leadership training. This course has given many a high street dentist the confidence to use these skills to apply for posts in wider health care where they would have not have thought about before. It was disappointing that the Faculty of Medical Leadership and Management founded last year initially allowed only secondary care dentists to join. However, after much lobbying by us and support from the college, I'm pleased to report that they're now going to allow our full members to join too, as of from April, I believe. 